welcome everyone to our discipleship tutorials. I'm Mark. And I'm Scott. And we're excited to start a new series today yep. on the life of the church. So we're going to be covering a lot of important topics for you as disciple, um, for disciples, plural as well, in the community of faith. Uh, we're going to look at church history, uh, important doctrines historically of the church, yeah. um, your, your spiritual gifts. Yes. What What is the life of the church all about? And Scott, today we're going to just run right out of the gate firing with an overview of the early church's history. Yes, and, and the church really started um, in earnest with Jesus uh, and, his, and his disciples. And after he ascended to heaven, he... he Gave charge to the apostles to to grow the church. Yes, that was that was one of their their tasks was to continue to, as as God would bring people to to belief in Jesus, to feed those people and to spiritually and to care for them spiritually and and just grow the church out. So so the initial church was very small. Right, it was, it was very small yeah. band of believers, people that believed in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, yeah, and we read about that that small group of disciples in in the first chapters of Acts, right? We do, we do. and so that's that's where we start our church history in the Bible. Actually, the Book of Acts um, tells us the first thirty, forty years of the life of the church, and an amazing uh, account of of what the of how the Spirit of God was working in the church, and Absolutely. and all of the miracles and the growth that was happening, and all the uh, challenges that they had to right. overcome, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So that's where we start. Our first resource is the book of Acts. Um, we have the epistles as well, which fill in some blanks uh, for us in, in the first century. Um, but then after that, to the surprise of, of some maybe, we have writings of Christians after the Bible as well. <laughs> we do. Who were discipled by the apostles. Yes. Um, and we, we hold those in, in great value to teach us about, about church history. Now, the, the early church, the earliest church, uh, you can imagine, did not have large buildings to, <laughs> no. to gather in. No. Nope. Uh, they, they, there were no basilicas at the time. There were no large, uh, you know, auditoriums mm-hmm. that people were gathering in. No. Nope. Uh, they were basically gathering in each other's homes. Mm-hmm. That's right? right. Yes, that's right. And facing uh, severe persecution in the first couple centuries as well. Exactly, yes. And, and tough, tough, tough times. Um, uh, uh, the, the persecution would come and they'd be scattered, but when they scattered, they would take the gospel with them mm-hmm. wherever, they, wherever God might have led them at the time. And so over time, you can see that, that the, the message of Jesus, the gospel of Jesus mm-hmm. and the good news of, uh, of the Lord Jesus was, was being pushed out of Jerusalem into the the communities around and and you know Jerusalem, uh, Samaria, and the uttermost parts outside of that into Europe. So absolutely. Yeah. So God uses the God uses persecution for for His mission um, for His glory. Um, but it was a, a very difficult time for those believers because it really was. essentially it was an illegal religion. Yeah. You said that Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord, the Roman Emperor is not. Right, and that cost many of them their lives. It it really did, yeah, and persecuted uh, in the worst possible ways in many cases, and so, and yes, and so, praise God for their faithfulness mm-hmm. and uh, their ability to, to stand up for the truth, um, no matter what adversity hit them. Uh, it was it was a very very difficult time to to. Uh, name Jesus as your Lord and Savior, for yeah, sure. Definitely. Um, though through that, like we said, God was working. Uh, we, we see that, you know, the, till the, around the 300s, Christianity is illegal, heavy persecution. Yeah. We also have, during this time, um, many writings of what's, what are called the Church Fathers, and they give us some important insights on the biographies of the apostles. Yeah. Um, they also name out letters of scripture they were using. So yeah. we know that scripture or the Bible we have today wasn't just made up by someone randomly. Yeah. But they, they knew about the books of the Bible. They were using these books of the Bible. Yeah. Um, and we finally get to be a good, a good place to park at. Um, Scott is in Constantine's time in the 300s. Yeah. 
Christianity becomes a state religion. It's legal. It's the official state religion. Well, it's because I believe Constantine wanted the support of the Christians. Yeah. You know, uh, while he was in office, mm-hmm. uh, and so he stamped Christianity the the official Roman religion uh, for Rome, and uh, that helped sweep him into power and and hold on to power. Sure. I, th- I think. Yeah. yeah. No, it makes sense, and that obviously has some uh, interesting impacts. Yes. When when the state religion is Christianity, I don't think that that was necessarily the design. God's design to have a state religion, um, but that, that had some interesting impacts throughout the the centuries leading up to the Reformation. As we, well, one of the impacts was that persecution started to to come down. Right. Where right. it was very high, it started to come down. So, so it it did. There 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 was. At least a uh, an initial benefit mm-hmm. uh, to the church. If if you're being persecuted and hunted down because you believe Jesus is Lord, mm-hmm. um, and now all of a sudden, uh, you know, the emperor says that it's fine. Jesus is Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, then then some relief from that persecution sure. uh, comes your way. Sure. So that was one of the benefits that came with. Yeah, that. definitely. But definitely. there. There were some downsides, though, from from that, for sure. Right, right. So, yeah, we see a benefit of, obviously, people aren't being killed and, and persecuted. Yeah. Um, then we also see you can kind of become an institution. So Christianity yeah. becomes an institutionalized religion. Yep. Um, and as we've been going through, constantly reiterating that Jesus is on mission, the church is on mission, and so you can stop being on mission and become an, an institution. Um, and obviously, you know, we can have some of those effects today. Even, yes. in our, even in our own country. Yes, and so I, the way I kind of look at it myself is I see it uh, in a couple of different phases. And the first phase is from uh, what we have just described sure. is from Jesus to around uh, the early 300s, sure. maybe 320 to 350 or yeah, somewhere in there. Um, and some, some important things occurred along the way, the, you know, the... Uh, the Council of Nicaea, mm-hmm. where all the church leaders came in and wanted to make sure that they wrote down the primary things that uh, that that the church believes. Exactly. You know, what does it mean to be a Christian? Right. And so they wrote those things down. Yeah. And so what we get out of that is something called the Nicene Creed, mm-hmm. and you can look that up yourself. And uh, it's that's what they came up with at that time. They believed that. Uh, that that was necessary. Mm-hmm. But after that, and to your point about institutionalizing, I kind of, in my own mind, think of it as the age of, of orthodoxy, the age of the orthodox church. And you had a number of orthodox churches that, mm-hmm. that were established. Obviously the Roman one. Sure, sure. Right? Uh, but there was also a, a, a contingency of, of Christians in Greece, in yep. the Greece, Greek area. And so the Greek Orthodox Church was birthed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the Eastern Orthodox Church, which was, uh, you know, on the other side of, of the mountain range uh, of Christians that uh, didn't want to be told by Rome what to do, mm-hmm. right? And then that, you know, the Russian Orthodox Church, and, and we were just talking, the, what was that group? Uh, we have uh, Coptic in Egypt. Yeah. In Coptic, yeah. Yeah, down yeah. in Egypt. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we see that, and, and that, t- that style... That framework was pretty much the framework for a long right, time. Right. Yep. Right. We had official um, languages the church used. Yep. So the Catholic Church would use Latin, for example. Right. That was the ling- the religious language. That's what it was was preached. Yeah. Very um, syst- systemic and structured kind of religious order during those times. Yeah. Syst- yeah. Very structured. Yeah. Right. And uh, anybody that's that's uh, familiar with an Orthodox church, you go inside, and everything is very sort of settled and structured. Mm-hmm. Well, you, it's been like that for a long time. Right, right. You know, they've carried those those structures on for a very long time. And so, one of the things that I've noticed in an Orthodox type church, tradition, yeah, is something that's held on to very tightly. Yes. So, if you look at a Roman Catholic Church or a Greek Orthodox Church, um, tradition 
and scripture are are seen on par in a sense. On par. So you have the writings of great church leaders throughout time, but what they say um, is the framework through which you interpret scripture. So the church, the the institution, yep. is the final authority on mm-hmm. matters of faith and practice. So yep. that's the kind of development we have um, leading up to the Reformation, where there's kind of a, a counter to that. Well, you can imagine after you know a thousand plus years of that mm-hmm. type of that type of structure, that uh, tremendous it, it leaves room, especially in in men's hearts and minds. Sure. It leaves sure. room for or creates opportunity for some great errors to occur. Right, and that's what that's what begins to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, after hundreds of years and hundreds of years and you know errors start creeping in, and they're all blessed by the church and, you know, uh, uh, with all the ceremony and such. And, and it could be just an awful thing to start doing. And yet it's, it's, been, it's been blessed by the leadership and they, and they run away with it and, and carry it out. And it could be just absolutely, horribly, unbiblically sure. wrong. Right. Right? Right. Well, imagine that over time. Yes. You just stack one thing yep. on top of another on top of another. Yeah. You get to the point where you don't know well, where's what's truth anymore. Exactly, exactly. So that's the, this is the setup for yeah. what's going to be a a literal worldwide revolution. Yeah. In the Reformation, and that's not to say that there weren't true disciples during this time, because there obviously were. Sure. Um, but there was, you know, there was corruption. There yep. was tradition that was placed on par with Scripture. Yep. There was a big divide between the clergy and the laity. Yep. Um, and obviously the, the whole idea of the Bible, too, which an important thing right before the Reformation is the printing press is developed. Yes. As most people during the, the Middle Ages uh, weren't literate. They did not have, people did not have a, a Bible that they carried around with them um, and were able to just read freely whenever they wanted to. But they'd have to rely on going to church to hear the Bible. Yeah, so, so you can imagine that if, if I don't have, a, you know, if I don't have the Bible right. in my hands to read for myself, but he does, and, I, you know, and he's telling me yeah. what it says. And I can't read. And I can't <laughs> yeah, read. Yeah. I'm at the mercy of I, I'm kind of what at the he m- says. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's just, that's just rife for, for the word you use, corruption. Sure. And it did create a lot of corruption and um, the printing press, I'm super glad you brought that up because once Gutenberg, and it says, you know, 1456, yes. printed the first Bible. Right. Wow. Amazing. And yeah. that's only about 70 years before the Reformation started. Yeah. So just ripe. So you just mentioned a word. Yes. And we've mentioned it now, uh, Reformation. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that. We're going to take... So this video here takes us right up to, you can imagine that over time, a lot of tensions started building with inside the church. Right, right. That there were things that were not right going on. Mm-hmm. That there was, it was, uh, whether it's the Roman church or, or any, any, any of the other um, um, Orthodox churches, there was a, a groundswell of concern over corruption with inside the church. Mm-hmm within uh, how, they, how they were conducting themselves, how they yeah. conducted their affairs in the world, um, how they, the things that they, that they had their people doing sure. and requiring people to do. Sure, sure. <coughs> Excuse me. So groundswell, imagine a, a groundswell of discontent mm-hmm. with inside the church. And um, that's going to set us up for our next video, Right. our next video where we talk about what happened with all of that, with all of that uh, discontent. All right, so stay tuned for uh, an exciting journey on yep. the Reformation in our next video. Amen. God bless you.